All right, so this is a 2016 Razor 900 50 inch. This is the factory radiator. Um, been having issues. Already overheated twice. So we're installing a new custom radiator from TCP, totally cool performance. This is, I'm showing this because the, the clearance is going to be really tight on this new radiator, especially with the uh, this winch. This is a 4500 Polaris OEM winch that six, sits back in behind the radiator. So with the new radiator being twice as thick, it's going to be it's going to be really, really, really tight. That fan's going to be sitting right on top of that winch. Um, so it's supposed to be engineered to fit. Let's let's we're going to see what happens. And here's the the new radiator over here. Looks really well made and crafted. We're going to find out if it actually does the does the job or not. So what came in the box is this radiator, this little short hose, and two clamps. And this is supposed to be um, the mud version. So it has bigger gaps here so that it can be washed out easier. And uh, we're going to see, uh, see if it works out. Um, we're going to put engine ice in it, which is supposed to drop your engine temperature alone by itself. So maybe that might help out with somebody that's uh, having overheating issues and, and can't afford a new custom radiator. Maybe try that out. Um, that shit's not cheap either. It was like 22 bucks uh, a thing there for half gallon. So, all right. This is the 2016 Razor 900 50 inch with the TCP mudder radiator installed. Um, see it fit perfectly. Um, it, because of the thick, extra thickness, it does push your hoses back a little bit further. So we put a little tie wrap here just to keep that away from the shock. If you look, it actually a lot more room down in there than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was really going to push that fan more on top of the winch. Um, that is an OEM Polaris winch that that I installed previously. But the radiator looks really good. Now we had a little bit of problem. The the OEM clamp did not fit on there because of the tightness right there so we actually this was provided with the radiator so we we traded it this is the clamp that was down here it's just thicker it works fine but just didn't have uh the clearance to clear that fan plastic right there um so we we used uh distilled water to purge the system and get all the old Polaris cooling out uh, and we're we're running engine ice that uh, that was recommended uh, it's supposed to drop the temperature alone and so this is it that's the that's the TCP mudder radiator we're uh, we'll be putting it in a lot of mud and we'll let you know how it how it works how it pans out um, it looks awesome though, um, and see how thick it is. Here's the factory OEM radiator. This thing has 400 miles on it, basically, I think 413 miles on it. Um, I'm gonna try to clean it up real well and sell it. If you know anybody that wants it, please send me a message. You can certainly have it, I'll have it all cleaned up for you selling it cheap and that's it we also put in a Dalton clutch um, we'll make another 
video about that, but this is, uh, that's it. That's the, the mutter radiator, the mutter oversized triple phase radiator from totally cool performance. And that's what it looks like installed. Oh, we did, we did mess up here. Um, the video, the installation video that's provided by online, um, it's not very clear on, on it. They don't do a really good job of, of telling you where to drill these holes. Um, we went seven eighths of an inch the wrong direction. Not only that, it doesn't tell you seven eighths of an inch from center or from the edge or from which edge to drill this hole. So luckily the first time we drilled them in the wrong place forward, although this bracket is fairly cheap. This is, they're $20 each. Um, so it's not the end of the world if you, if you need a, but something to look out for because we didn't make a mistake there. I figure I'm, I might swap this out later or I might not. Um, I do have one extra one over there, but I'm really not worried about it right now. See how, I want to see how this radiator pans out. Um, so that's it. Be really careful when you're drilling these holes. If you look, you see, so the hole should go back towards on this bracket, the new hole, this is the new hole right here that the plastic fan stud is in. This is the new hole. This is the factory hole. And this is the hole that we drilled the wrong hole, the wrong place. Um, so try not to do that. And good luck. We'll let you know if this thing solves the, the overheating issues. Um, again, I'm really, really impressed by the fit. Uh, it's tight, but it's certainly it's certainly in in there like it was engineered to be um, So That's it guys. I hope this this helps you out All right, so just wanted to show everybody this is the where the bleed screw is to bleed the air out of your coolant system we had to take this uh, shroud off Never mind these hoses, we've got kind of different projects going on at the same time. Um, that's part of the waterproofing that we're doing, anyways. Um, so, yeah, there's the that's the screw, it's located right there above your exhaust. It's a 5 16 and also has a flathead on it. And that is the guy right there. So, you're supposed to take that completely out. Um, run it until a solid stream of coolant comes out you know no air and then you know you have all the air out of your cooling line so that's it okay this is the second test drive with the tcp radiator you can see it's uh it's been idling had it running for well over 30 minutes at two, 204 degrees. You can see the thermostat opens up and the fan kicks on if you can hear that. I'm leaving the hood on because it's actually holding a whole bunch of heat in there and I wanted to see, you know, how it would perform. Um, I would consider, you know, it's pretty much ideal conditions right now. Like I said, I've been running it for about over 30 minutes um, around the neighborhood and letting it sit here and idle. And initially, when I first crunk it up, it would, uh, as soon as it reaches 204 degrees, the thermostat kicks on. And then, um, as soon as the, the coolant cycles through the radiator, it was dropping it down to 188 degrees which I said, cool, you know, I thought that's good, but I, I thought to myself, well, once that coolant gets hot, you know, that was after this thing was just sitting totally cold. Once that coolant gets hot, I figured it would no longer, um, it wouldn't drop it quite as low to 188 degrees, but um, I was wrong. Once it uh, cycles through that, radiator it's been really really consistent I've watched it probably 
go through this cycle at least well over 10 times. Um, I started running this thing probably at like 8.45 this morning. Generally, I don't like to let it sit here idle or whatever, but I've been intentionally trying to heat the motor to see uh, how well the radiator's working, uh, the new TCP radiator. I wish I had done this with the factory radiator um, so I'd have a comparison, but I did not. However, so you see it'll go through the cycle again. It's going to reach 204 degrees. The thermostat's going to kick on. The fan will, will kick on. Uh, the thermostat will open the valve. The coolant is then going to cycle through the radiator. And like I said, it's been consistently um, doing this, of course, under ideal conditions. It's about 75 degrees outside. It's, you know, 924 in the morning. All right, 204 degrees. So the fan just kicked on. You can see that TCP. Pretty sweet. Fan is running. It hit 204 degrees. And it's up to 206, which is what it's been doing. It really hasn't reached over 206. Now it's down to 204. And it will steadily uh, go back down to 188, which uh, I feel like it's uh, it's performing perfectly. Um, we made sure to to purge the line to bleed all the air out of the coolant line and uh, run an engine ice for the coolant. 194. 192, 190, and the fan cut off, cuts back off at about 192, 188, and it has been consistently doing this for, I'd say at least 40 minutes. Um, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, the the new radiator also looks pretty mean. Um, I like, uh, I just like it. I like it a lot. Um, this seems to be performing well now. We're going to see how it does when it's uh, got mud caked all over that uh, radiator. We're going to see how how it performs then. So, anyways, this is the, the second test drive. Um, I'm pretty happy. I feel comfortable to try it out on the on the trail and uh, that's it. I also put a, a new Dalton clutch. I've been kind of test driving at the same time. Um, I'll do another video on that, but um, this is it. It's a 2016 Razor 900 with the TCP radiator. Um, Garth was uh, really awesome to talk to. He answered all my questions. Um, I thought about relocating the radiator to the hood but I, I really, I didn't like the look of it and uh, I didn't like uh, the loss of, uh, it would mess up your view over the hood. So I didn't like that, that aspect of relocating the stock radiator. Although it would have been a lot cheaper and see the fan just kicked on 206 and that's as high as it's reached. Um, I'm really impressed and it's been, you know, running for good. 45 minutes now like I said I feel really confident to go out and actually try it in the trail so um, that's it so far so good and we'll see how it uh, it performs um, in, in less ideal conditions